So today we're going to talk about uh, insights into addiction. And if we talk about addiction, we have to talk about the brain. And so this will be our just 30 second, one minute review of the brain that we seem to start with a lot, which is that our brain is three pounds. If we look closer, if we zoom in, our brain is made up of brain cells. So this is one brain cell we're going to talk a lot about today, the interaction of these brain cells and how they control our different mood states and our different feelings. So how many of these, if this is one brain cell, how many do we have in our brain? 100 billion, anywhere between 80 to 100 billion. That makes the brain the most complex machine entity that we know of. This is two brain cells, but we have 80 to 100 billion. If we think about how those brain cells interact with each other, how they communicate with each other, what happens is, is that a mix of electrical and chemical signals allow for your brain to communicate from brain cell to brain cell. So if one brain cell needs to communicate with the next brain cell and the next brain cell, these are three brain cells, there is a mix of electrical and chemical signals. And we will actually look today at how those chemicals are passed. But if we look at three brain cells interacting, what do they kind of resemble? Spiders or maybe more like wires. And so your brain is a lot like a big jumbled up mess of wires. That's really what it is. It's a very complex mix of wires. And so, whoops, how much wiring is in your brain? If you have 100 billion brain cells, if you were to take one out and then line up the next one and the next one and the next one and line all your brain cells out in a straight line, how long would that line be in your individual head? So 250,000 miles. So you have 250,000 miles of brain wiring in your brain, from here to the moon. Everybody in this room, that's what you have. So your brain is very complex. It's a big, jumbled up mess of wires. The question is, amongst that jumbled mess of wires, where is the feeling of wanting? Where's the feeling of pleasure? Because the root of addiction is really wanting and receiving pleasure. So it all started with a classic experiment. Decades ago, this was discovered where the pleasure center was in the brain. And this was discovered by accident. This was done by two scientists named Milner and Olds, and they were looking at rats. And this was several decades ago, and they wanted to understand in a rat's brain, how does the rat go to sleep and how does the rat wake up? And so what they did was they had an electrical wire. And since our brain runs on electricity, and all living things brains run on electricity, they took a wire, an electrical wire, and they were stimulated different parts of the brain, trying to figure out if we touch this part of the brain, what will happen? Could we make the animal fall asleep or wake up? So what happens a lot in science is that you look for one thing and you discover something else. So they, what they discovered was when they had this electrical wire and they were stimulating different parts of the rat's brain, they found a part of the brain that the rat absolutely loved. It made the rat feel an extreme sense of pleasure. So what they did was they put a twist on this experiment. They asked the question, what if we don't stimulate the rat's brain, but we let the rat stimulate its own brain? So they set up a device where there was a lever in the cage. And the rat learned that it could press the lever and it would deliver a little bit of an electrical stimulation to basically the pleasure center of the rat's brain. So how many times a day do you think the rat pressed the lever <laughs> to get the pleasure? 700 times a day, which is basically nonstop, all day long. The, rat pressed, the rats pressed the lever so many times they stopped drinking, they stopped eating, they stopped sleeping. The rats died because all they did was press the lever. We're going to talk about in addiction in a few minutes how that happens. How does something take over the reward and priorities seem to shift when certain parts of the brain become overactive? 